So we started on Lucas doing heroin. I yeah. did, yeah. He's doing heroin in the studio. They grow up so fast. That's heroin what they therapy. Said about. Our guest is also currently apologizing live on air to Louis C.K. Louis, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talk about what you did once sorry, more. What, what did I did. do? Okay, I'm so sorry that I tweeted one time that if I was in a room with you, I would light a match to the curtains and block the door so nobody could leave. <laughs> But it's kind of reminiscent of what you did. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's actually smarter than what he did. I think it's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he ruined the curtains in a different yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be crass, but there's no way old man Louis C.K. had enough cum to reach the curtains. <laughs> it's probably a He fountain. looks like a guy who would save it up. For what? <laughs> a friend? A rainy day? For the show. For the comedy show. Oh, of course. <laughs> the comedy for show. For his comedy. Yeah. I think that that would actually be brilliant if Louis C.K. ended an entire set by being like, now I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving it up for you guys. Madison Square Garden. <laughs> See, that's actually funny. Like, if yeah. he came on stage, that's actually funny. <laughs> That'd be a little... That'd, that'd be, be a good bit. That'd be a good... Okay. <laughs> It'd be... Uh, I'll race you. I'll <laughs> race you. He brings up someone. <laughs> <laughs> it just becomes a Madison Square Garden circle jerk. Yeah. Oh, my God. But you Ugh. know who is actually funny is... Th- our podcast sometimes. Welcome hey, to the welcome. I know that you were trying. You were like, "Oh, we're about to introduce a guest." Fuck, we haven't said what podcast yeah, we said this what is. Podcast welcome to Tuna Sea Meerkats. People might forget what podcast we. Are. They might God be knows like, we "Wait, do. is this Red Scare?" <laughs> <laughs> People always confuse me for Dasha. Oh, I see it. <laughs> I don't know Red yeah. Scare enough. Yeah, it's just two terrifying, very, very bony women who are just. Very mean and cruel. They're so Ooh. they're mean for like a hobby. They're mean for sport. Yeah, they're mean Ooh, for fun. Okay, I love sports. Did you see that they had like a thing? Um, it was like one hundred and thirty dollars to meet them and Roger Stone in like a Brooklyn warehouse. Wait, wait, wait one hundred thirty dollars to what he went for now? a ticket to meet them and Roger Stone at like in a like a where, Brooklyn warehouse. Event. So you bought okay. it? No, I didn't. But the poster was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is maybe the ugliest people on the prettiest poster. <laughs> <laughs> Graphic this is a is YouTube thumbnail. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Sailor Socialism. It's yeah. just not for me. Weird no, people. Great you. clickbait. Just, Great clickbait. Yeah. yeah. Even better clickbait is our guest <gasps> here. Fantastic comedian. You know her as the host of uh, Jimmy Buffett Presents, which has taken the slot that uh, Anna Hathaway has in terms of uh, the wonderful open mic stunt at Pine Box Rock Shop. Give a wonderful round of applause to Olivia Senna. There's a plot in, in your room. And on the subway, if you're listening to this, anywhere you are, in anywhere, the office, yeah. applaud. Applaud, applaud live where you are. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hold for applause. <laughs> How do you feel about the fact that you are you are kind of the, the grandchild of Aaron and I? I feel absolutely fantastic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so young and re- refreshed. <laughs> you. How do you feel? I feel so I young. I feel, I feel bursting with youth. I feel like it's a tiny nice. baby. <laughs> Tiny little sexy little baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, crazy that babies can do stand up now. Yeah, yeah no. Gabby, I'm... do you remember when you were young? No. No, it you was don't... too yeah. long ago. <laughs> <laughs> my, fir- my first words were bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were they? No. No. That... no, I think it was like up or some shit. <laughs> some so you were basic. That's so, so what you're saying is you were Italian, but then you grew out of it. <laughs> I grew out of my Italian. Thank yeah. God. I, sh- I yeah. shake it off. It's yeah, kind of my... cringe when they don't grow out of it. No, being it's Italian. really cringe when they don't. <laughs> my first words were aziti. <gasps> yeah. Really? And mine were baked. <gasps> That's that's how we wow. became friends. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. On the we popcorned. <laughs> you guys popcorn red. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's a year younger than me, we came out at the same time saying baked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just you know I'm I'm late. I'm just notoriously late to stuff. That's why. Yeah. We are the same age though. It always yeah. makes me laugh that like the idea of a first word like when they first pop out of the womb they're just saying the word. <laughs> that can't yeah. be how it works. Do you know your first word? It was dad da. Oh. Mm. Mine was no. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice. Yes. What was yours? It was up. It was I think. up. I think it was oh, up. Oh, yeah, it was. What, were you talking about the movie? Uh, no. <laughs> that, no, I was. She's not I that. I think I was like seven, maybe, when that movie came out, or eight. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been your first word. It movie. could have been my first word. So, what word. you're saying is your first word kid. was when you were seven slash eight. Yeah, so I was a really shy kid. And. <laughs> 
I they <laughs> they were really worried about me until I said my first words when I was eight, and then they were like, "Oh, she's gonna be a stand up comedian." Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We're gonna yeah. see her on stage and a movie buff. Oh, because mm. you were referencing the movie. Up. I am a yes. movie buff. I'm a big television buff. I think more than movie. I wish ah, I was the movies better. of tinier screens. The movie of the smaller screen. Yeah. What, yeah. Are, what are you watching? Where right now? Um, well, I'm, I'm watching The Real Housewives, um, mm, which season? New Jersey is airing. I think okay. it's like New a Jersey, 14th okay. season. Those women, that's my WrestleMania, I think. Yeah? I think. They're, Have you kept up from the beginning? Uh, yes. Oh. That's actually something I used to watch uh, when I was, it was around the same time I said my set, my first word when I started watching. <laughs> <laughs> around that age, though, for real? No, around like, it was maybe, I was maybe like 11 or 12 that when my sense. mom and okay, I were yeah, like yeah. kind of watching it. My mom's like a big Bravo head. She loves like the Vanderpump rules and she loves that boat show that they have, the below deck. Below deck. When they're on the boat. Yeah. And then they're absolutely, they're just going crazy. And then crazy. they're below deck. And the, Chris where Chris loves that show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's obsessed with that show. And I, I just love reality TV in general. So I think I mostly like kind of, um, really just like go for that if I'm trying to watch something quick. Um, last night I was watching um, The Masked Singer. Oh, what season? The recent season? Yeah, it's season yeah. nine. And that show is foolproof. It is like, it will transcend time and space because it has celebrities, guessing games, and karaoke, which is three of America's favorite hobbies. That's true. The three genders. The three genders. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I personally am karaoke. <laughs> 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 no, but um, I'm celebrity. Obviously. What was the third one? Um, guessing game. Oh no, I'm oh, still karaoke. You're still karaoke. <laughs> I'll take guessing game. I, yeah. I'll <laughs> I think Lucas is guessing game because you never know what you're gonna get. Mm -mm. Not What's even going me. Going on that big old brain. Oh, there's a lot of empty space. In that noggin. <laughs> there's there's a lot, there's just wind. <laughs> one time, our mutual friend told me that uh, she asked Lucas what he was thinking about, and that you look kind of offended, and you went, "I don't think." <laughs> I was I was like, no, that's. I don't have shit all the time. I was like, you, no one has stuff all the time. And and then I was, and that's when I realized a lot of people have stuff a all lot the of people time. Have, how what do you stuff? think? Is it words, pictures? Uh, word? I feel like there's different quarters. I was thinking about this the other day. I feel like there's different quarters of my brain, like always kind of going, like firing on all cylinders. Like okay. there's, there's always a song back here. There's always just like something I'm worried about here. And then maybe like a picture over here. Mm. And I'm like, I could, I could probably like, like, uh, three like a three track mind type thing. Yeah, switch around. I also like I do this in conversation, which is maybe not the best for a podcast, but I will absolutely just kind of like grab onto a to a topic and then just veer off and tangent. No, I love it. Yeah, 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 no. I'm like, well, maybe that's great. We both have maybe that maybe so that's yeah. how podcasts work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, that's how this. That's one definitely works, how this works. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so glad to be well, here. It was, it was very interesting, like watching that happen naturally as we started doing the podcast in person yeah it was that, great. that we really like veered into that that was like a very interesting thing to like experience it was like oh we've just started doing a lot more riffing just with the benefit of just like being close to each in other person without the lag of zoom holding us back yeah, yeah. i think yeah. podcast hosts really like make or break your podcast no matter what the subject is even if it's just like a free form base and i think you two are like so good bouncing off each other and like the episodes I've watched that I'm just like, I'm so happy Aww. to be here. Oh, we're <laughs> so like, so oh I love God. talking to my friends. We um, love you, we say. No, yeah. we're very excited to have you because here. Because I think most podcasts I'm, I'm driven to is just like two people who have been friends for a long time just talking talk their mouths. Talking their yeah. mouths. Yeah. their mouth. Yeah. We'll be friends one day, you and me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll, wait, we'll get to that point. One day I'm gonna befriend Lucas. The day yeah. it happens, Call me up. <laughs> Call oh. me up. I gotta. I gotta witness. The that. stars will show it. Mm, I'll, I'll look at the. Moon. I'll be like Gabby and Lucas are being coming friends under that same moon. <laughs> <laughs> look, this TikTok guy just said he wants to be my friend. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Oh, and don't get me wrong. I refer to myself as TikTok guy first and foremost. <laughs> Anytime I'm bringing up Lucas on stage, it'll be and it's Lucas Arnold from TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, I actually had a really good time at Jimmy Buffett last week where I did a lot of riffing just on that, and I and I sort of like played a heel love where i was like yeah i have a lot of followers let's talk about it i <laughs> love when you play a heel yeah because there's always some bisexual woman who will come up and play the heel right back at you you'll just go okay <laughs> wait, wait wait remind me wait, what do you mean talk i about just this. i feel like i feel like your life is full of like bisexual, bisexual women, women who are your heels Am I wrong? Wait, I, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Talk, wait, I just explain feel like it. your life is full of bisexual women who love teasing you. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much 
every woman in your life I can think of is, is bisexual that, and teases and me. And loves to tease is you. Is that who yeah. surrounds you? That is, is that who you surround yourself with? I mean, it we is are, a lot, yeah. We are in, I guess, I mean, it's clear to our audience yeah. that we are in Brooklyn, even though we're always like not trying to say specifics. And we'll yeah. always be like, we're in the United States. Yeah. Somewhere. We're on the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> Eastern Seaboard. Yeah. The Northern Hemisphere. Nondescript. Yeah. We're in the tri state area. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever state you're in, we're in the tri state area. We're, we're, we're where you are. We're in your ears. I never understood like what tri state area meant other than that, like you're within two states removed from wherever you are. Is that what that means? I believe that's what it means. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like if you're like in California, like in the up, maybe like upper part of California, your tri state area is like. Whatever state is above California, <laughs> whatever state yeah. is next to California. Oh God! What state? Oh are fuck those? me! Fuck. Come on, Olivia, you can do it. You can do it. Mm, I'm you trying to. I'm trying to look at. I'm trying to look at a map, but like, don't stop believing is playing back here. <laughs> 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 and I'm, and I'm no, worried. that's your hype music. Listen to it. And I'm worried it. about my mom Believe over here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing to worry about. She's fine. The hemispheres are working against you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Tri state area of quadrants of your brain. Oh my god. Yeah. My brain is the tri state area. Yeah. That's where we are. We're in Olivia's brain. Right you now. Guys None of this are is real. My brain. I like it here. Oh my Great god. Great furniture. I, I can't wait. I'm going to wake up soon. <laughs> Can yeah, I wait? Wait? Do you ever <laughs> think that none of your life is real? Sometimes I'm like, that's crazy that we lived through like. A bajillion people dying through the pandemic, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. that. There's no way that could be real, is it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, COVID's fake. If that's what you're asking, <laughs> I'm like, was I was We're I truthers. home for a week, sick in my bed on November because I had COVID? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's it does feel weird to be so nice because like the first time I had COVID, yeah, I treated it with that level of severity, and then the second time I had COVID, I just like went home because I was like, well, I guess I have COVID. Felt nothing, and then like tripped mushrooms while cleaning my apartment. Oh, nice. And I was like, this can't be a real virus. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's, there's no way I have to, like, quarantine from everyone and I just get to play, like, video games all day because everyone understands. And I, and I think that it used to be that, like, if you were sick, you still kind of had to suck it up and go out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. now it's like, do not do that, you know? Well, I yeah. actually looked forward to those moments. I was like, oh, I get to go to the grocery store today. I get to be two feet away from someone. I yeah. get to walk 10 yeah. steps without losing my breath. Yeah. 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 I had to, Honestly, like, with, like, when COVID started, I actually didn't have a moment where I was like, oh, is this really happening? Because, like, my dad fed me stories of societal collapse when I was a kid, so I was... We weirdly prepared, mm. which okay. is a really dark thing to say, but it is true. Did your father pass away uh, before or after the pandemic? Uh, or during? During, like okay. uh, May 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry for, for your loss and bring it, just bringing it up. But, yeah, it's uh, crazy you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 just, no, it's fine. It's um, crazy you did that. Yeah. No, it's crazy I, you killed him I, with your words. I, <laughs> 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 Oh, I was so mad. That's <laughs> <laughs> you locked him in that room with the and you lit fire to the curtain. And, and he was like, well, wow, my feelings are hurt. It was him and Louis C.K. that day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, I am. Um, I lost my father when I was super young. Um, oh, so I'm sorry I, to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Is that what cool. some of the things you worry about? Um, death is like a really big one, I think. Mm. Um, and just like not really what comes after because I'm like, who who the hell knows? But um, death and dying and like the the um, concept of loss in any capacity really mm. scares me or change. Mm. It always has like since I was a kid. Like I remember, maybe this is like I'm gonna be like, oh, maybe someone's gonna diagnose me with something uh, about this if I say it. But <laughs> it's um like I remember like sobbing because my parents got it like threw out our old couch. And got a new one. And I remember it was maybe like four or five years old. I was just sobbing because I would loved that couch. And I'm Aww. like, why is there an attachment to this? Um, yeah. Come to find out later uh, is because uh, a lot of people say that, like, you're attached to a parent um, when you're a child because you know you're going to lose them. And the same thing happened with my cousin and my aunt. Like, she would always cry when she was a baby with... Um, if her mother wasn't holding her. And then when we were 10 and 11, she, her mother passed away. And then the same thing kind of happened with, I think, just like things in general and change. But I, I've become, you know, a lot better about it. And, and you know, mm. um, since it happened so young, it really opened my eyes to um, kind of processing um, and grieving in a healthier way when I become an adult. Like I just lost my grandmother this past December. Oh my and goodness. 
it was not to be like it was easier than you know losing your but like the the grief was different yeah you were prepared maybe i was a little more prepared and and the grief was different Mm. um different and oh oh, you could go well no i was uh, i was gonna ask like after the death of how old were you when that happened i was 10 turning 11 gotcha was there a point of uh, well, I'm imagining that that would like affect your ability to form connections with people because you may be afraid to lose them. And Absolutely. is that something you do or was there a turning point where you were able to overcome that? Um, I think um, I'm going to say that there was maybe a turning point where I was able to overcome that. I was just entering middle school as well. So it was hard for me to maybe adapt to those people. Um, I remember just school in general being a really tough time um, and just like a traditional learning setting. Um Maybe because my mom put us like right back into the, he passed away on maybe the eleventh and the school semester started on the ninth of September. Oh my god! And um, maybe we went back like the fifteenth. Um, and it's not like I resent her for putting me back into like a normal because like what are you what are you gonna do? You have two young kids and yeah. then you're a single mother now, and it's just like I, I have so much respect for my mother um, to raise us after after you know losing your husband and in, in, in that. Um, but I've always been surrounded by family. Mm-hmm. I've always been surrounded by, like, love and just, like, I, <laughs> I I hate when people are like, oh, you got love as a child. You were hugged as a child. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I was really fortunate enough to be. And I think um, a lot of that, like, helped me kind of just view the world in a specific way where it's just, like, be kind to everybody because you never know when, when the last time you're going to see them is. Right. That's such a beautiful thing, I think, especially, like, yeah. in the comedy community, too, where there's a lot of, like... I don't know, like, there can be all this clout chasing and, like, kind of, like, posturing, and it's just, like, I think it's really nice in a creative capacity to understand that, like, artistry is just, like, nurturing the inner child, so if you're nice to everybody, then it's, like, you're kind of being nice to yourself a little bit. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I also, there was something I sort of realized recently in, like, my own perception of death, which is that, like, this may be a little bit dark to say, but some people have said that like, like death is a great equalizer, that it's something that happens to everyone. And Mm -hmm. so it made me realize, Oh, we're all equal people who just haven't reached an equal point yet. Yeah. And so that actually helped me sort of like with interpersonal relationships. Except among the races. No. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Gabby told me she was racist before. Finally you said it. (laughs) (laughs) So how are the holidays in South Africa? (laughs) So... (laughs) Really equal. So let's take it back yeah. to May 2020. <laughs> Where were you? 2020. Mm, I was uh, I was late to January 6th. <laughs> I was like, oh, everyone did it without me. Fuck. <laughs> I love the idea. They were like, yeah, we we, we want to get this done. Gabby's a little annoying though. There's, <laughs> there's a very large WhatsApp group that Gabby Jordan Brown yeah. is not a part of. <laughs> they there, are, me. there were two people, uh, two groups, two parties not uh, not allowed to be involved in. January 6th, it was you and everyone on Joe Exotic's team. Oh my uh, god. Wait, that's true. I remember yeah. that. What a crazy time. I Wait, know. What, what are you talking about? Oh, d- like there were people like at January 6th, like what became the riots? Yeah. I think we talked, I, t- I brought this up yeah, on the did. podcast a while ago that, um, because if you watch Tiger King season two, they're Which there and they're trying to be like, free Joe Exotic. And everyone else who's like for Trump, they're like, no, you guys are crazy. Leave. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay. And then they're like driving away and then they see that the riots happened and they're like, oh my God. And they see people <laughs> hanging from the rafters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, that looks fun. Those bitches were swinging on the scaffolding. It was insane. It was amazing. It was kind I kind of like want to kind of swing on the scaffolding. <laughs> I mean, there's under lots, different circumstances. Under different circumstances. <laughs> I want to make that clear. I want to do it outside of the dramatics NYC haircuts yeah. outside. <laughs> I do want to sit in Pelosi's office, though. I do. <laughs> oh my god. We should do it at Pine Box Rock Shop. Sometime. We should. We should. I think stage. Uh, you know how they do like Civil War reenactments? <laughs> yeah, I do. Know, I do know that. Pine Box Rock Shop is an amazing little pocket of Brooklyn where you can do anything in that back room and they will just be like by you can recreate the White House that you can recreate January 6th back there no no, you can't but I mean maybe if we tried I'd love (laughs) Heather Jeff (laughs) I'd love to put a mic on you and have like like secret cameras like recording as like a sort of like a prank pitch (laughs) to the people that might be like hey so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set things up Uh, ignore the guy with the horns on his head Uh, (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stage January 6th (laughs) 
hey, listen, so it's it's cool if we just kind of throw a throw a reenactment, like a war reenactment back there, like oh, a crime reenactment. They'd probably yeah. be like, that's so cool. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're actually really big fans of this such and such TV. We'll do a drink special. <laughs> we'll do a drink special for it. I mean, they'll kind of, li- one time, I don't know if I told you this story, but when Aaron and I were running Anne, we like ran like way over time. Mm-hmm. And um, these people from another event like came up to me and it was this kind of like snotty queer person. Um, and they said to me, um, you actually have to leave now because we have a sold out event. And I was like, okay, like we'll leave and we'll give her and drink tickets. And then instead of just dropping it, like the person, like I thought that they would do, they went, yeah, it's queer yoki with dyke beers. <laughs> As if I was going to be like, oh my god, Queeryoki with dyke beers? How could I ever like step on Queeryoki with dyke beers? Selling out the Pine Box Rock Shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was your space. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's crazy. No, we haven't run into any issues like that with yeah. the um, mic, which is going fantastically. And I thank you and Aaron. Back to, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago we were talking about... Um, things we're grateful things, for. Yeah. <laughs> things we're grateful for. Um... <laughs> I no, I really appreciate you guys handing that off to, to yeah. us too. Um, me and my co-host Rowan Zioli, she's fantastic. She's taking she's a little fantastic. hiatus now, but she's like a wonderful mic co-host. And like, um, I didn't really want to lose that Friday like uh, space that you guys held in like that the the really cool like um, workshop kind of mode that you guys kind of cultivated in that uh, yeah. space. So when we were like talking to the Pine Box, they were like, "What makes you guys different from all of our mics?" And I was like. Um, nothing, but we, we could do a drink special. We could, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we could, be, we could do help the bar. <laughs> it's awesome. The difference, a growth mindset. <laughs> a growth mindset. Yeah, seven streams of income, billionaire mindset. People do it. Yeah. People, people will pay $5 people. for that extra minute. Let me tell you. That's mm. awesome. And it, it, does it work. pays off in spades, I think. I nice. love that. Yeah. Well, how do you feel like you have changed or grown as a comedian through running a mic and through setting up sort of a community space in the Brooklyn comedy scene? Absolutely, yeah, it's a great question. I um, I feel like I've definitely changed and grown uh, in my stage presence, which is the number one problem area when it comes to my performing, I think, um, and like feeling comfortable on stage because hosting, you're all, you're introducing the mic, you're yelling names like out, out on the, uh, you're introducing people constantly, about 40 comics every every week, and you're just constantly, you constantly have to be present and on and like listening and active. And that's really helped me um, just kind of being in that work mode for two hours every Friday and mm. being able to just kind of like run around and like get to know people. It also helped a lot like networking wise. Um, like I've met so many cool comedians. Um, I'm going to call out Stephen Brower, who is, I don't know if you guys know him, but he is fantastic. He, I would not have known who he is if he didn't come to the mic. And then mm. we just kind of booked him on our last Jimmy Buffett Presents show because he's just such a fantastic comedian, so smart, and did great thing with that three minutes, and it really oh, definitely awesome. shows. Um, Can I ask, like, what yeah. was your ex- first experience like hosting, and what would you, if anything, go back in time and tell yourself before you went to host something for the first time? Ooh. Okay. I, um, I, what's the first thing I hosted was... I believe it was my a PowerPoint comedy show Hell yeah. at Easy Lover. Um, and I would have told myself to get there a lot earlier to figure out uh, the tech situation. Yeah. Mm. And um, the, and like to not be afraid to ask questions because I was pretty scared to ask questions. And then um, with certain venues, they kind of just throw you in the room and they don't really give you much direction. So it felt like an escape room setting up a little bit. Mm. Um, and it's also just like, Trust your trust the comics that are on your lineup, and trust that they're gonna do, you know, their thing. Um, it's not that I didn't, but I, you know, I was reserved because it was like a different type of um, it was a different type of performance. So it was all comics doing um, powerpoints, comedy stand up comedy sets um, about like for their first time because it was the first uh, show, and there's a topic every every show uh, for my show slides and tell and. It was super interesting just to see what they came up with because um, a lot of people just had like some crazy first, like crazy first kiss, crazy first time um, realizing I was non-binary, like crazy time having first time having gay sex, like, yeah. um, and just like, yeah, tr- trusting them and then like kind of also just encouraging them and being like, hey, I know you can do this. Um, 
Yeah, and that, I think that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's is great. always great. so encouraging. I feel like yeah. I, there was one time I was like on a show and it was kind of one of those like three people, three audience bar shows, mm -hmm. and the booker said to me like you know, this is a place where, like, I want comedians to feel, like, comfortable failing and trying new things and just, like, taking space and stage time. Mm -hmm. And I remember that just, like, made me feel so good. Yeah. And, like, I feel like, I don't, I don't know if you've experienced this, but, like, when you get booked on something, you feel like, oh, my God, like, if I bomb, like, everyone's going to hate me and they're going to regret booking me. But, like, the truth is, is, like, the space you go for, like, a spot, you know, every, like, Mm -hmm. is somebody's just like playroom mm -hmm. is like the person who hosts Absolutely. it weekly or monthly it's like their space to play so it's like they're booking you because they trust you but if you don't do well like it's still their place to have fun mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's so nice to think like oh i got to create that space where someone felt so comfortable that they did something awful <laughs> No, if you do or say like absolutely horrible things, you will not be asked back. But <laughs> yeah. You will, you will be be like, please, you're not yeah. welcome. But I am touched. You think that was okay with me? It's crazy that you thought yeah. that was fine. <laughs> crazy that you thought I wouldn't say something. Yeah, that you thought you could do that. Oh my god, I gotta tell you guys a story off Ooh. camera about yeah. a girl Wait. in my uh, grad program who said some crazy shit. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I well, I gotta ask: Is there some? Is there anything that like sticks in your mind of like? Something that someone did where you had to ask them to be like, oh, you can't come back, but you're just astounded that someone yeah. did that. Uh, not that I was astounded. I I think I knew it was coming. It was a specific comic. I won't name this person, but um, they kind of went up closer to the end. This was a few weeks ago, actually. Mm -hmm. First time it's ever really happened. I've been hosting the mic for maybe seven months, five, five seven months. And um, someone went on stage and he was, doing, he was doing great. And then he starts dropping like a joke about like how he gets called the F slur and how, and he's like that. And he was kind of just dropping the F slur and he's like, I'm straight. And I was like, Oh God. Oh no. So we lit him early. And then like at the end of the mic, we were like, Hey, don't come back. If you're going to say slurs like that, like on stage. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm in charge of a room of 30 to 40 comics every Friday. God forbid, you know, someone feels uncomfortable or like, it's just like not okay. Or God forbid someone goes on stage and just says things that aren't okay. Like I get, I, I, I'm the first line of defense, I think, when it comes to, like, deciding what is cool and not in the room. And yeah. I, have, I have community to protect. I have yeah. friends that I, I I don't think that shit should fly. Being, for, in like, being a straight cis woman, I guess I'm in more of, like, a privileged kind of position to say that. Because if a queer person were to go up and be like, hey, I'm not cool with that, obviously the straight white man is just going to be like, Psh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. I... Yeah, so I feel like... Um, and, and I guess... Yeah, privileged as a host as well. Um, just to be able to say something and like, you know, because I've always been that person just to be like, hey, that's not cool. Yeah, that's awesome that yeah. you're willing to. I And it, and it is nice, like, I remember when Aaron and I ran the mic, like, mm -hmm. we did kind of say up top, like, no homophobia, no sexism. And if anything, like, really bad did happen, we wouldn't ask people back. But, like, we're both pretty non-confrontational a certain way, mm -hmm. especially Aaron, who gets so anxious. Yeah. And I remember there was one time, and when we had Sean O'Connor on the podcast, we told him that he did a good thing during this. Like, there was a guy, a random comic, never saw him again, who went up in a free Martin Shrikeli shirt. And Aaron mm. and I were both like, oh, God, like, what are we going to do about that? And then Sean O'Connor goes up right after him and just fucking blows up at him. Good. And it's like, what the fuck are you wearing? Why are you wearing that shirt? That's not cool, dude. And, like, just, like, lit into him. And I was like really happy that he did that because he wasn't trying to be a white knight he mm -hmm. was just doing what Aaron and I like didn't feel comfortable doing and I was yeah I, and like you know it I, did the guy like leave the room or yeah he never came back oh okay <laughs> he never came back I don't know like I I am someone who does advocate for like if if it is within your right or if it's funny or if it's like something that's in your wheelhouse like I do advocate that like you can say something offensive yeah. like being in the row scene like Obviously, that's something that, like, I deal with, but mm -hmm. I, I do think that there is a sense where it's, like, community does come first, and so yeah. I appreciate you putting that out there. Yeah, thank you. I think there's a time and place for that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Revision Lounge on Fridays at 8.30, perfect place for that stuff. <laughs> the echo mic? Oh, that's my God. And I, I respect Sarah Harvard for, yeah. do it, for kind of providing that place as well. Just yeah. Like, yeah. So and what you're saying is that if you just feel like you need to say the F slur, there is a place for you. There is, there's, a, there's somewhere. 
but not here. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the back of the Pine Box Rock Shop establishment. That's <laughs> only for January 6th. That's only for the LLC. January 6th <laughs> reenactments. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are $5 on Eventbrite at jimmybuffettpresents.eventbrite.com. <laughs> Slash January 6th. Slash January 6th. <laughs> Love that. Use code, oh. <laughs> use code Pelosi for $5. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Why is that such a fun name to say, Pelosi? Pelosi. It just, mm. It's because she sounds Italian. <laughs> she is Italian. She's Italian? Yeah, she she's Italian. Italian. Oh, she's one of them dirty Italians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this guy, Tony Soprano, he sounds Italian. He sounds Italian? Wait, I'm sorry, Nancy Pelosi is Italian? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm just surprised because she, like, doesn't seem fun, no. you know? <laughs> no, she would not be, she'd not They're be They're boring Italian people. I, sorry, I watched The Sopranos and they all seemed really fun. Yeah. <laughs> the sun on The Sopranos. I was I about to say, favorite. you've heard of Jake Letizia, very fun guy. I'm making, yeah. I'm, I'm being Great mean fun. for Are no reason. Are you Italian? I am Italian. <laughs> Are you a, hun a hundo P? No, I'm half Italian, half Guatemalan. But, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? No. Do you speak Italian? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no I, do you I, speak English? Sometimes. Okay. So that's selective. Yeah. selective. I, say, I can say up. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You can also say January 6th reenactment at Pine Box Rock Show. <laughs> nice. That's a really important sentence to say. <laughs> did you take languages in school? I did. I took Italian and I was, it was, my mom was like pressuring me to take Spanish. She was like, you're never going to use Italian in your life. <laughs> Boy, yeah. was she right. Did any Italian uh, stick? <laughs> what? Did any Italian stick? Not really. Um, like maybe food just mm. because it's yeah. like something that's kind of around but like if i if you give me like it's a around. Yeah. it's around that's, yeah. <laughs> if you give me a sentence or like something i could i could probably work it out like a math problem yeah <laughs> um it was like the past present and uh future tenses that really got me like i would used to i used to write like that's all the tenses yeah <laughs> <laughs> every moment every waking moment is just difficult for me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but I would, uh, I'd be, I write like, I went to the pizza shop yesterday or I, I would go to the, I will go to the pizza shop yesterday, like on my test. And then oh, they'd be like, well, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So once, <laughs> once we didn't have What if to, you're a time traveler though? Oh, in my, which case it would be correct. It would be correct. Uh, <laughs> the teachers are limiting you. <laughs> They're limiting me and my, and my powerful stone that I found. <laughs> and the powerful prismatic shard I found. <laughs> In the third, in the third floor boys' bathroom. <laughs> Nobody's listening. It smelled to great. Me. Yeah. Nobody's listening to me, and I've been, have had this for ten years. <laughs> I've been going back and forth, stealing all your tweets. <laughs> Oh, you're that account. Oh, what, what was that? What was that Twitter account that stole everyone's tweets? A Dory? common white girl. Oh, common white girl. Common white. Of, there were so many. There were a lot of joke theft. Yeah. Account. Are you a big Twitter user? I, I thought you were about to, to say, are you a big joke thief? Are you a joke thief? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. I. I um. I used to be a big Twitter user, like really big, and then I think, I guess once Elon took over, there were like dips, and like once Elon took over, I um. It's just like, I don't, I don't want to use this app anymore. It, yeah. it just kind of, the fun was gone. During the pandemic was a really big Twitter time for me. Like, I had a separate account just to talk about Big Brother. <gasps> I Ooh. like reality, and just other reality shows I was watching. What else do you watch? Uh, do you watch Love is Blind? I do watch Love is Blind. Are you I, on season four? I am on season four. I, I can't watch I'm, it. I'm on maybe f the fourth or fifth episode. My boyfriend and I are watching together, so I'm not one to watch without him. But um, we watch it like sports. Like we're screaming at the television. We are <laughs> trying good. to coach them, but they, this season they're so cringy. They're, they're so horrible. Cringy. I think it might have something to do with like, see, this is like the diametric pivot of what we were saying before. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that like, so they're all based in Seattle this season. Oh, okay. I think oh. that like, like over analytical tech liberals mm -hmm. make like a worse reality TV because they're so thinky and they're so in their heads all the time. And they're just saying shit that is so 
stupid like they cannot stop thinking about how this situation is like wrong and they should just extricate themselves but yeah. they can't because they're on a tv show mm -hmm. whereas you get someone like irena who's great tv because she just sucks and you can tell she's not <laughs> liberal you can tell i don't know where she okay leans. now you've convinced me to get back into it because i want to see a group of people not know how to yes and and just argue over the circumstances did you see um, that's what i did you make it as far as watching zach sing to irena <gasps> no I, I i haven't made it to the end of episode one of season four Zach singing to Irina, I was really high. We like, I was, Sylvia and I were like running around the room, like screaming, yeah. like in disbelief that this yeah. was happening. Yeah, we'll get up and we'll start like gest <laughs> doing big gestures to the TV. Cause we're, but he's like, so Zach is like proposing to Irina. He's like, I wrote this song for you. And he sings this absolutely horrendous song. <laughs> and and she, <laughs> then it comes out in the news that he did not write the song. He, he Who wrote it? it? Some band named Ludo. I don't even know what the song is called. Oh. But it was like, it's like a really old, like, just random ass song. <laughs> oh, oh, no. He no. did not write that song for her. Oh, I didn't know he crazy. didn't wait, write wait, wait. it. Okay, oh. wait, okay. Spoiler, spoiler. Do they actually end up together? Do you know yet? I don't know because I haven't finished the season. Okay, okay, okay. Something okay, I might spoil it then, but I, I hope the that they, like, have a kid and that kid has to know this origin story. <laughs> Their kid is called Ludo. His name <laughs> is named after the band. Ludo. <laughs> Zach is really funny on that show, though, because um, he was, like, talking about his background. He's like... I'm, my parents passed away. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. And my boyfriend and I looked at each other like, is he? He sounds a little bit like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of just started going, like riffing, like, um, yeah, and I live I live in the in a bunker. I'm from Gotham. <laughs> I'm a, my yeah. butler named Alfred, he's so great. <laughs> and then someone said like something, I don't want to be painted as the villain. <laughs> I yeah. turned around and I looked at my boyfriend, I'm like, Villain? Somebody say villain? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of think he is Batman. <laughs> I think you might be right. If, if Batman like stole it, oh my God, is he a joke thief too? Oh my God, he... He runs a Twitter page? He runs a Twitter page. <laughs> he, he works for Fuck Jerry. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Or like the fat Jewish Instagram fat account. Jewish, yeah. <laughs> The fat Jewish w is always, like, such a surprise to me that he was a real person. Mm. Yeah. Like, what is that about? He was that a he real person, but, like, it, wasn't it, like, a team behind him? Yeah, there yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. All of those. That feels very reminiscent of, like, I've been thinking a lot about, like, the 2014 to 2017 era of pop culture. Mm. Like, we do you ever think about that time? We knew nothing. Yeah, it was interesting because people weren't sharing their lives and their home lives as much as they were no, on yeah. now. And I think, yeah, being home during for two years. That was years more of a photo like, era yeah. on social media rather than a video era, whereas I think we're in a video era now. What was around Vine was six seconds. You had yeah. six seconds to make a joke. And, and I mean, people did it, but like you can't see someone's house in six seconds. Like, right, you can't exactly. see their home life. And people, I mean, conceal their home lives and, and like put on a whole show for, for social media now, but yeah. I think it's a lot more honest mm -hmm. and a, a lot more accessible. Um, yes, but I also think that, like, it's a little too accessible and we mm. need to roll... Like, the idea of, like, families, that that's their whole thing is their job is to, like, put their whole lives on social media, especially, like, their kids. I think that's going to become illegal at some point. Yeah, a lot of a lot of folks are... Because they're um when your child is a child actor there's a separate um amount of like their check that's put into an account that the parents cannot touch it's called the coogan account yeah because of i think like gary coleman so the parents that are profiting off of their children's stories and maybe i, I saw one that was like our baby might have cancer it was a whole like short documentary about like how their baby their baby's fine is like a parent of like seven kids their baby's fine but was just like documenting this whole process of like running through tests and like oh my god all the oh god. all the ad revenue all, all, all of that like there's no way to kind of protect part of that for their child in the future so i think there's like a there's a really big ethics issue surrounding family channels yeah um, yeah yeah i agree <laughs> i was yeah. gonna say if people like get mad at them are they like no it's our kid who may have had cancer <laughs> like blame him it's our, <laughs> it's our lived experience yeah <laughs> Dude, stop. <laughs> it, was like, it was like 70 million people clicked on that video for what? <laughs> I know. Well, I remember what I feel nostalgic for is like those Shane Dawson videos where it's a thumbnail of him like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the caption is like, am I gay? Question <laughs> mark. 
<laughs> because why did I want? Why did I want to click on that? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't care today. Did you click on it though? Yes, of course. I watched the. And whole was he gay? He's bi. He's bi. I think he's married now, right? Yeah, he's married to some nice dude. They seem happy. Oh, oh that's I, nice. I think they're about to bisexual with a boyfriend. We know. Th- we know many. <laughs> I think they're also having a child. Nice. That's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and the child. I should mention. I, oh my! I'm oh like, no. oh, that child's gonna be so fucked up. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, no. I don't know anything about. I never got into Shane Dawson. I know nothing about he him. Did, he I heard something. He got into some nefarious yeah. shit. Some a lot some, of nefarious shit. Okay. Um, he's just one of those edge lord type comics. I mean, comic is a strong word for a dude who didn't do. Comedy other and than like... And yet we know many. Yeah. Yeah, we know so many. Comic is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just like a lot of like weird shit he did on the internet. And I guess that's like also kind of growing up on the internet and like putting yourself out there. But um, time and time again, people have been like, that's not cool. That's not cool. That's not cool. And it's just kind of like showed that he hasn't learned. Yeah. So I think... Um, I think... I can't remember what happened. Maybe it was like the thing where he was like, I fucked my cat on a, he was talking on a podcast. Oh yeah, he talked on a podcast about how he fucked his cat. Well, now I like him. (laughs) (laughs) Lucas? (laughs) Suddenly he's relatable. (laughs) (laughs) Haley (laughs) Hiccut. It's over. It's done. It's done. The podcast no more pod. is over. No, no more pod. pod. Uh, this man done. needs to be punished for his crimes. Lu- Lucas, can I help you write your notes app apology? <laughs> <laughs> your iOS press release? Yeah. We, it's a notes app apology. And then it, it's a carousel on Instagram. So the first one is a notes app apology. Then you then scroll another. to a video and it's a video of him jerking. <laughs> On a cat. On no, it. I'm sorry. Not <laughs> on a cat. Not on it. Leave cats out of this. No, because you do Don't fuck something. with cats. Don't, don't fuck with. Don't. No. Do not. Are you guys aware of the Don't Fuck With Cats documentary? Yeah. Gabby, you know. do you not know about this? <gasps> you shouldn't fuck with cats. I think that's such a great documentary, too, because yeah. so there's this dude who was posting. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I watched this forever ago, but um, mm. there's a dude who was posting videos online of him, like, with kittens. And then he would just kind of kill them on, on camera. And yeah. people found out, like, people were tracking him down on forums. Like, they're like, okay, this is, like, what his outlet looks like. This is what country he's in. This is what the street <gasps> lamp looks like. This is what street he lives on. And so they kind of found him through, like, this weird vigilante, like, online criminal just like, criminal justice, like, armchair activist type deal. But it, it was crazy. <gasps> it's on Netflix. I, what I what I hope would happen is that the people who found him were actually just a gang of cats, <laughs> like a ragtag gang, like came and found we'll him. We'll get him, boys. <laughs> <laughs> James Corden was there. Was like, <laughs> James Corden, like, oh my, we're gonna for me now Wait. until he stops. I thought you meant like, cause he was like on the highway doing one of those dances. Like, okay, if he's there, that means that this guy's <laughs> over here, like <laughs> triangulating. <laughs> Oh my it's god! Like like James into the mainframe. <laughs> Imagine you're taking a video of yourself killing a cat, right? <laughs> James right. Corden. But James Corden's is, out the window. James Corden is out the window doing a flash mob on the highway. <laughs> They're like, James we got Corden it. It also feels very like 2017 to yeah. me. The whole like carpool karaoke, like yeah. it's ending. That is a yeah, that over. is the best summary of him. He's a very 2017 guy. He is, very 2017 he is guy. like the flat the flash mobs, like improv everywhere, I feel like was happening. <gasps> yeah. Improv everywhere is still happening. But like I feel like You can't be serious. Yeah. Oh yeah. I when will to, we be released from the suffering? From the shackles. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do the improv ex- the the um mp3 experiment like three years in a row in like middle school wait what is that so um you download a file that's released on the same day and everyone downloads the same file and it's kind of like flash mob b um but like maybe there's like a thousand people who who are listening to the same file on on their phones and they're like okay sync your watches or or sync your playtime to like maybe six o'clock and then for two hours somebody is giving you directions and like one of them was like you have to go into a store anywhere in new york city and then you have to start dancing and well pick up a product and start like dancing i forget which year this was maybe eight um like the eighth one and um then they were like okay well you need uh and then they tell you to bring like certain um things so we had to bring toilet paper then we all met in bryant park uh you all end up like walking 
towards the same area. And then you end up in a Bryant Park, and then, like, they're like, all right, just start TPing the place. And then I think another one was like you needed to bring a gift for a gift exchange. This feels like a fever dream. I yeah. was going to say this sounds like a nuisance. It is a big nuisance. Yeah. Like I think the Bryant Park staff was pissed. <laughs> yeah. But, um, that and the the pantsless subway ride that they do. I don't know if they still oh, do that. Oh, that. I, I actually yeah, yeah, do yeah. remember the pantsless yeah. subway ride, but I never did that. I never did. That. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was twelve. I started it. <laughs> you started. Well, I started it. Lucas does what it every day. It? I'm not wearing yeah, pants right it? now. This is painted. Well, what? <laughs> what what ended your pantsless subway ride? Yeah. Pants. Oh, it's so okay. fair. When you discovered them, you were like, Meh, no, yeah, exactly. Right. When I found a pair, I was like, what a great when idea. When someone was like, hey, is that Lucas from TikTok? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, we had to be no, like, no, 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 no. I didn't recognize you with pants on. I didn't recognize you without pants, man. <laughs> so when did you start, like, before we get into listener yes. questions, yes. like, you mentioned, like, child actors and stuff. I'm yeah. curious when you started performing. When I started, I started performing pretty late, but I was always, like, super inspired to perform uh, pretty young. Like, I, like... Love, uh, I Love Lucy, Mary Tyler Moore Show, um, just really strong women in comedy, Carol Burnett Show. So oh, love hell yeah. Three of them. Were your Tracy parents Ullman? like big, like, they're like, oh, we want to show this to you? My mom was, for especially for I Love Lucy, and like, to the point where I had a 10th birthday party, I Love Lucy themed. <laughs> it was like, oh. it was like maybe like, they just had it playing in the background, and then like, we all painted like a dress or whatever on a canvas, but like, it was just kind of like, that was like something that I was like super attached to. And then once I kind of got into like older grades, like maybe middle and high school I started doing a lot of theater and I started doing a lot of like uh, stage management and like directorial kind of stuff um, but once I was in high school I was like I think I want to perform and so I had like an amazing group of friends like from theater who were all performers and they were like yeah you should do this so they all helped me and then um, I went to college for acting for two years and oh, that's awesome um, then I realized I was like maybe this isn't Maybe this isn't um, the most marketable thing or safest thing for me as an adult, but I still want to work in the scene. So I became like a digital media and video production major. So I was doing like podcasting and like making short documentaries and kind of just like doing whatever I really wanted, like driven by art. Um, I think my college was really good at letting us do that as well kind of taking out a camera and making whatever. Um, and then I somehow, oh, I wanted to work in television, like live television late night. I ended up working on this little show called The Special Without Brad Davis, which was a public access comedy show, sketch comedy show that was completely different every week. Um, comedian Brett Davis was the host and he would play different characters and it'd be a different theme. So I kind of started just working on that as like a PA and then I slowly... But pretty quickly actually became like the art department like director and just kind of like doing props and silly shit for that show. That led into uh, that show ending and Chris Gethard Presents coming back to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Um, and that's also when I started like doing stand up and that was right before the pandemic. So that was really fun. Um, it was a different comic, like up and coming comic like Martin Urbano, Christy Cello was, had the show, had a show, uh, Rachel Pegram and Joe Rumrill. Um, I also have made amazing shows. Uh, Anthony DeVito and Greg Stone had an amazing show. Um, so I was a production designer on that show, and we were Whoa, kind of that's doing sick. That's crazy amazing. sets. I was 20 years old, 21 years old, just like oh, in college, dream. pretending oh. I wasn't in college. They knew I was in college, but like, <laughs> but it was like under the I, yeah. And it was really cool because there was a. It was like, like like what we were saying earlier. It was like a ro room for failure mm -hmm. and not too big of an of a pressure of like cable and like being perfect and especially style of Chris Gethard's comedy and the people he surrounds himself with is not being perfect. Um, and I think that really like drove my comedy style um, and kind of was, and I was just like, okay, I like writing stand up. I'm going to start performing. So I started doing like laughing Buddha mics. Yeah. And then I moved out of the city. I moved back home for a bit. Um, pandemic hit. And then I was, it was just inside. I was not going to do zoom comedy. I wasn't like motivated enough, but once we got out of that, I was like, Let's start doing open mics again. And I really, really appreciate um, all of, like, the people, the talented people I've met um, through that and, like, the spaces that, you know, you and Aaron once provided or, like, even this. It's, like, thank, thank you so much for having me on. And um, and just, like, yeah, this, the really cool spaces and experimental comedy stuff and, like, the Brooklyn comedy scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just kind of was able to throw myself back into it which was really cool that's awesome um was there any yeah. trepidation when you threw yourself back in or were you just like so eager to just like oh yes finally yeah because i dealt with some health issues um like maybe summer of 2021 so uh, let's, uh, so like maybe it was maybe like 
spring of 2022 where I was like, okay, I think my body and mind is like sound enough to kind of be able to present myself on stage and, and work with that pressure. Um, but it was, it was really scary going to Mike's alone. Um, but I will shout out Ryan Kersey and Carson Milnerick, uh, who have two gays, one mic. That was Love the first. Guys, yeah. That was the first mic I returned to. It was such a fun mic. It was a really cool workshop experience in like a WeWork. Um, they post amazing shows, and they're just really, really kind and like provided that room for for experimenting with your comedy. Um, and I guess the trepidation was like, can I write stuff that's not about sex and or or dating or being a woman and still be funny because I feel like that's a lot of female lady driven comedy is like so I was fucking this guy the other night Mm. and I'm like maybe I still have some jokes like that but then I realized a lot of people took that as an invitation to come talk to me off stage about it and there are a few people that have and that have just hasn't sat right sat right with me so now I don't really write jokes about that and like being able to discover not a cleaner comedy, but a different type of comedy, um, more absurd comedy. Like, uh, I grew up on Brian Regan's self-titled album. Oh, I love him, yeah. And I still love that album. All of his specials are fantastic. And I think he does it in, it, it's family-friendly comedy, but it's really, um, it's really smart comedy and, like, sharp and witty. And, and um, just, yeah, I, I really, so now I guess I'm kind of in a space where I'm like, I'd love to experiment with like just kind of everyday things and observational comedy rather than just sex and being a woman, a 24 yeah. year old girl dating in New York City. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. It's really yeah. interesting. You, I feel like I went through a similar evolution. And I think that's something like comics go through because when you start, you want to just like, you, you want to get people's attention. So mm-hmm. you want to shock them. So yeah. like, I mean, the first things I would talk about was like being queer because mm-hmm. it's like a way to talk about sex. For yeah, me. and I found that shocking. I... <laughs> Lucas is like, but you seem so straight. <laughs> He's like, Gabby, write what you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd get on stage and I would lie. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I have this girlfriend. Meanwhile, it was a boyfriend. You willed Sylvie into existence. <laughs> She's she's a deep fake. <laughs> you know, I've never met her. She's so. an AI. <laughs> she's an oh. AI. <laughs> she's never said a word. It's all chat GPT. <laughs> wow. Sometimes I feel like we're an AI couple. Tonight we're gonna read a we're gonna drink wine and read aloud from um Prince Harry's memoir, Spare. <laughs> so. Wait, that sounds so fun. This is it gonna be really so That funny. sounds so fucking it's, fun. It's an absurd memoir, by the way. I, I listened to the full audiobook. It's wild. We were talking about that. It was the other night, yeah. Yeah. And you got a great Prince Harry impression out of oh, it. Oh, thanks, yeah. What is it? Oh, um, my penis was oscillating. <laughs> <laughs> Just to tack so on what good. you said, I think I didn't realize until I got more confident in my comedy that, like, you can talk about topics that are not immediately attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. It's also, you know, it's okay to talk about sex on stage and Mm -hmm. being a woman, but it's like, you should tell Prince Harry that dude, you don't need to talk about this so much. (laughs) <laughs> Gary Wait, talks about it so you much. You can talk about being a woman. Wait, does he? You like, can talk about being a queer woman. Does he like being Brooklyn pegged? Com- is that the is that the issue? Is that not the issue, but the whole thing. <laughs> Wait, sorry, say that again. He likes being pegged. No, oh no, oh. he never talks about being pegged. Oh, I thought that. Oh, maybe that was Prince William that likes being. Or maybe that was something on, I do not on the internet that. that I saw that. We can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. Which prince likes being pegged? Listeners, write in if you know right. which <laughs> prince is like being pegged. We're, yeah. we're actually going to yes. get to yes. their, their complaints. And oh, their, yes. I shouldn't call them complaints. They're complaints. But we complain people. about them. But uh, all right. So advice? I have one pulled up right here. All right. Oh, yeah. Two of my friends who I introduced to each other, let's call them Tony and Tim. Totally, completely have crushes on each other. And prom's coming up, and neither one of them have a date. And I want them to ask each other to prom so bad, but neither of them will actually say that they like each other. So I don't know how to get them together. I'm also conflict-averse and hate when people feel like I'm in their business. Tim's school doesn't have a prom because it's weird and doesn't go to, and doesn't do dances. But Tony's does, and I think he wants to go but not alone. And I just want them to date and be cute and gay and happy, goddammit. So if you guys have any plans for me to slyly get them together, I'd appreciate it. Wow. 
That's a whirlwind. This, but I like this problem. I do. This is a, this is a this is a juicy situation this right is. here. This is this is very cool. I was gonna say if they both had proms, it'd be cute if the he or this this person they winged man wing manned themselves into wing mend wing mend wing wing they themselves into <laughs> wing them to themselves into. <laughs> 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 Wing Olivia's head just exploded <laughs> for anyone not watching Wing the video. Wing folk plus themselves. <laughs> we offended nobody. <laughs> we offended no one. We... <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, but if they, they just kind of like con, uh, con, con personed themselves and uh, like um, setting up a promposal where they're promposing to each other. Ooh. But since one has prom, I would definitely... Uh, prom... Listen, prom is such a fun night that is so just like trivial in the grand scheme of your life that I think if you, re- I think you can be in your friend's business for this one thing. Yeah. And and I think you're not being a bad friend by encouraging someone to step out of their comfort zone unless it's like a, rep- unless it's like feeling forced, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. In that certain type of way. But um, you could also, it, promposals don't have to be a big thing. Be like, oh, we could just go as friends and then. Friends leads to the rest of yeah. <laughs> your yeah. life. I wonder if this person has brought it up with either Tony or Tim. Yeah. Like yeah. individually, because maybe one of them will say like, oh, I'm shy. Like maybe you could float something to Tony that I'm yeah. interested in. That's what in. I was thinking. I yeah. was wondering if you could, if like she could say like to Tony, be like, hey, I think, I don't remember which one goes to the school without, but like, mm-hmm. just be like, hey, I think Tony wants to ask you. Hey, I think Tim really wants to get asked. Like, yeah. things like, something like that. Oh yeah, play both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely play. I'm thinking about what you said about how prom is kind of trivial because I remember watching movies where they're like, prom's the most important night of your life. And I went to prom and I literally never think about it. Really? I was, uh, I finished school, my 12th grade online and prom was... Uh, prom, E-prom? E-prom? I did not have E-prom. I didn't meet the other students at the e-prom but i um prom in my like my hometown high school was like such again such a trivial thing like people would just ask people with a little pizza box or like that's uh, really cute you know go by their house with a poster board and it's like i think the less the less a promposal is the better um Mm. and i think it's also just easier when you're surrounded with friends and uh in my mind it would make it harder because i would be worried about like an audience witnessing a no yeah, rejection. that's also true. That's also true. Um, so don't maybe don't do that in front of yeah. your friends. But I think you should. I think this listener should uh, play both sides and yes. float, float the idea into Tim, Timmy and Tommy and Tony. Um, exactly. And all of the all of the rest of the Sopranos. Uh, yes. <laughs> all the Sopranos are going to go to prom together. I think they should. So jot that down. Yeah. <laughs> like the like the Cullen family. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Cullen. It's so incestuous. Okay, <sighs> we're going to get to one that's kind of sad, and then we'll do one that's really funny. Nice. Okay. I'm Someone excited. says, God, I feel like shit right now. I'm trying to become one of the editors in my college's art and literature magazine, but from what I heard from people more in the know than me, I'm not sure I'll be able to become it. There's no hard confirmation, but everything apparently is already decided, and this was mentioned to me by one of the editors when I, when I said my dream of becoming an editor. It was said as, unfortunately, everything's already decided i'm honestly panicking because i busted my ass as pr and i showed how much i would do for our art and literature magazine and it just feels like i'm going to get stuck in pr because of how much i did instead of having that hard work read as he deserves a promotion i know there's nothing i can do at this point but i'm just trying to get credentials as an editor because that's what i want to do after college it feels like no matter where i look i'm either too young or not qualified enough or opportunities i would love to take as i get older become impossible to get into for context i'm a sophomore in college and i'll be a junior next year i just uh want to feel like i'm worthy of my dreams but it feels like every which way i look i'm being tacitly told that i'm not Hmm. that's very sad and i don't think that person should feel like they're not achieving their dreams or not um you know worthy enough because there are so many jobs out there and your college is so insular and like it feels like the end all be all if you're not cast in the spring musical or cast in someone's something or or cast on a cast for the editor as the yeah. <laughs> you're not kidding. we're also theater pilled yeah if you're not cast in the editor role you're not cast they're as like as the please footballer. stop self-inserting like this guy. 
even if you're not cast as the footballer, I don't know what For to fuck's sake, I have a real job. I know. <laughs> but I think um, also taking, I guess, take note. If So this person's like, they're not in the right department that they want to be in? Yeah, they've been yeah. working in PR for the magazine oh, for a while. And, okay. they, and they want to eventually be an editor. I would definitely reach out to the editors and be like, hey, what can I work on? What are the expectations? And um, kind of look to them as like a mentor type deal, um, you know, or just, like, there's n no problem with asking a question. And also, I think remaining uh, like kind of like excelling in your current position and uh, will do you no harm, but also kind of show off your other skills because... Someone can see something and be like, hey, that person might be great for next year. Or like someone will see something and take and take a note of it if you're excelling. I also think um, more DIY projects would be really fun, especially because you get to do it yourself or working for like a like a small on online publication or zine or something. Um, and it comes to getting more credits. Um, and they said they were like an artist. Yeah. So there's there's so many outlets um, that you can do. Uh, I felt also I felt the same way in college that like if I wasn't working on this certain musical or this certain play or like I wasn't in this class by this semester that I would I, I'm like everything is gone. I'm like I, I'm stunted for another five years. But once I once I did find that um, you know that kind of outside work like the comedy shows that I was working on I felt it's like okay so there's so much of this to learn and there's so much of this to do um elsewhere and you know your small liberal arts college isn't the end all be all it'll help you get it'll help you uh like on a specific trajectory I think um of your career but also that's not the only way to that trajectory of your career yeah. and maybe you'll find something else in the meantime um you're 20 years old. <laughs> um, yeah. And if this is definitely something you're certain you want to do, kick ass anywhere you can. Yeah. yeah. And, and someone will see it and appreciate it. And I mean, I appreciate you and see you stand with you. That's Fuck right. Yeah. So I have pretty much nothing to add because all I was going to say is like, okay, if this isn't available to you, what is available mm -hmm. to you? And mm -hmm. just do everything that is available to you. Oh, Even yeah. as silly as this sounds or like overplayed, but literally just like ask like chat GPT, like, hey, I'm looking for editing experience because chat GPT is good. Yeah. I've been using it more and more and they're like, it's very helpful. Yeah. Lucas wants you to turn your brain into a yeah. little robot. Hey, yeah. I'm a shill. The robots first are going to take your jobs anyways. Yeah. That's true. But don't no even dreams. worry about it. Because don't have any dreams. dreams. Yeah. Yeah. We're don't living, have dreams. We are approaching a post work era. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That shit sounds That'd be like, nice. Uh, we that we say great. approaching a post work era. We are three people on a Thursday <laughs> at 1 p.m. <laughs> we are already in our post work era. I am actually very pre job and employable <laughs> to yeah. any, anybody who, any, um, any company seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> the girl reading this, hire me. Yeah. The no, girl reading yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> for real though I think that you said it perfectly and yeah. that I really don't have really anything else to add yeah. like do what you can and you will find stuff there's yeah. a, so much more than just outside of your own little world mm -hmm. that's it yeah. yeah. I, I also, I mean, I used to work at a, I, I had an internship at a publishing place for like a little while mm -hmm. and honestly, I mean, if you just find some higher level employee and like pick their brain and ask for coffee and be like, how did you get to editor? Mm -hmm. They'll probably answer because they kind of like talking about themselves. People love doing that. Yeah. I mean, we are to again here yes. doing people. just that. Offer to buy someone lunch and say, Hey, can I pick your brain about this? Yeah. Or, or even just send them a LinkedIn message. Be like, Hey, I'd love to chat on zoom for five minutes or even just email them questions you have. Be like, what, what, you know, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a great idea. Yeah. And it's, there's no harm in asking, and there's a bajillion people on LinkedIn, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I got the final one. Oh, my one. God, I just burped yeah. in the mic. Sorry. That was hot. I love that. I came, like Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's burping into the mic while the while the, while the, light, the, the curtains are on fire. <laughs> like, the curtains are on fire. The door is closed. <laughs> I die. She, she died as she lived burping. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right. So recently, according to my mom and dad, uh, according to my mom, my dad has been trying to go out and make friends for him to hang out 
with at local bars. And recently, my partner and I were going to a bar to play trivia because they had a weekly trivia thing. I happened to notice a familiar car in the parking lot and discover my dad was there. Originally, I was going to go say hi and ask how he was, but when I finally found him, he was sitting with a lady who was getting close in a very overly friendly way. I pointed it out to my partner, and we both sat a little bit away from them, and I just kept an eye on them. Eventually, she moved and sat in his lap, not doing anything more but that, not doing anything more than that, but still, this happened three to four days ago, and I am not sure if I should tell my mom because she has also had affairs over the time that they have been married. What the fuck? <laughs> but I had to tell someone. Wait, sitting on his Wait, lap, I is he a mall Santa? <laughs> Dear listener, I'm so glad you told us. <laughs> Number one. Yes. Number two, I'd have to pass because I don't have a dad. <laughs> I'm currently check looking, your privilege. I'm currently looking for one. Um, mm. I I would love for the Impractical Jokers uh, to audition for that. Yeah. <laughs> and no, but seriously, um, I think. Well, does your mom? If the mom knows, or if the dad knows about the mom's affairs, and if the mom knows about. This, I mean, you, there's no harm in saying something. You, you, your mom carried you for nine months. I believe in mom allegiance. Mm. I think so. I think maybe bringing it up with him, and maybe your dad's gonna be like, "Hey, uh, your mom and I are kind of cool with that," and a lot of people are. Um, it's a very mature thing to believe. Or Watch, I mean, their, believe. their household is going to be destroyed because I, of this. <laughs> well, this person is old enough to be going to a bar, so they're clearly an adult, I yeah. think. Yeah. This is a different circumstance that if, than if you were at the jungle gym and you saw your dad with um, with your friend's mom, like, sitting in her... Sitting in his lap, but um, at the jungle, at the jungle, on the monkey bars, lap sitting. <laughs> you love that. It's like, damn, this guy's bold. Damn, <laughs> right, right out at the basketball court. Riz. He got, he yeah. got the ball and threw it back to the kids. But I oh. think, I think there's since you're an adult, I think there's a more adult way to go about this. Um, if your mother knows about, or if your father knows about your mother's affairs, maybe talk to your mother. But if he doesn't, um, maybe talk to your father for i think you would should just talk to your father first and be like hey my partner and i ran into you like what's up there's no harm in asking um or you could just kind of live with uh the dramatic irony and be all-knowing <laughs> yeah yeah I, oh i have an idea i don't know if you guys have any yeah <laughs> oh yeah, i have an idea what's your thoughts oh i have an idea so you ask dad for a ps5 first first step yeah. Blackmail. Oh, yes. oh, blackmail. No, you're, you're way ahead of me. And so, my- yeah, you ask Dad for a PS5. He says, uh, no. And then you say, oh, cool. I'm going to go to trivia again. Uh, yeah. Mm. And then and then you see his response, and he's like, all right, how much is a PS5? Mm. Listener, you're going to get a down payment you got a PS5. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you get you a down pa- Listener, you're going to get a down payment on your house out of this. Yeah, you are. You're Man, gonna get a timeshare in the Cayman Islands. Mm. That's you, all yours. You just gotta ask nicely. Yeah. So first, see what you can get out of this. Yeah. Yes. And then the offer. When you see your parents having marital issues, your first step should be extortion. Yes, I believe so. Yes. yes. I wish I knew that when I was like eight, because <laughs> I could have gotten like three years of double lunch money. Now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> hey, mom, can I have lunch? <laughs> Extor- so, so the 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 moral of the story. Always <laughs> go into things with aggression. <laughs> uh, that's karma. Always extort. Always extort. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, thank you for telling us because that was really juicy. Yeah, that this was, sounds like a lot that you're dealing with. I hope you're okay. It was a lovely ride. It was a ride from start to that finish. That was awesome. But like all the great couples are non-monogamous. Like uh, Tony and Carmella. Oh, Carmella. that's right. Non-monogamous. Non-monogam- Lou Bega. Yeah. A little bit of Monica. In my life. A little bit of Monica. I, I like also. God and everyone else. Yeah. About Tony and Carmela. Tony fully had like gumas, but Carmela had like deep, gorgeous emotional affairs. Oh, yeah, with the priest. Oh, the priest and uh, uh, Furio. Furio, yes. Mm. I think there's literally a sentence. I, I just started like watching Sopranos for the first time. There's literally like a scene where she's like. I, I know he has like these extra women, but it's like I was raising a home and I was taking care of the kids. I couldn't give something to him that he maybe necessarily needed. Um, 
and like that and maybe he could get that elsewhere so yeah. i don't think she was ever really threatened is mm. the is the thing so i was like maybe you know it could work <laughs> <laughs> maybe it works just like hey great marriage i think i think it's um yeah i think maybe Car- to- look to tony and carmella yeah um i don't know who else is not i'm not <laughs> <laughs> none of my heroes are sucking and fucking so <laughs> listeners take heart because tony and carmella are the role models for marriage mm. indeed what maybe. if it was them what if it was <laughs> What if, who wrote it? What if it was Meadow who AJ? wrote it? Oh, AJ? AJ? AJ, yeah, hey guys, me and my partner. AJ would never say my partner. My partner. AJ would never be so involved. You think he went to like a small liberal arts college? AJ's, AJ's gone woke. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's on a po- has a podcast now. AJ, AJ, AJ does have a podcast with Meadow Soprano. Wait, they, really? The they act- do, and it's good. Yeah, it's I like actually, them. Are they really good? They're the fun. Show, they they, they do rewatch the show. They also just chat. They they're, they're, chat. You can tell that they're like so close. Like they're, they're basically family. Friends. Now they're yeah, really cool. Yeah, you grow up together. Like, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Also, yeah. the uh, Jamie Lynn Siegler is yeah. married to the son player. of a former baseball player. Oh, yeah. Look at that trivia. I know. Maybe yeah. we should go to trivia. We should night. go to trivia and find this list. Maybe, yeah. I'll, maybe I'll find my dad or see my dad. <laughs> Are you in the tri-state area? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find Olivia's dad at trivia. We're gonna find my dad. At We're gonna trivia. do it. We are also gonna find out what Olivia thinks of herself a little bit because we have self-perception corner and we need you to say how you believe you are perceived by other people then we'll say how we actually perceive you is this a bit or is this a real no, no this, this is a real, 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 real segment. segment okay <laughs> <laughs> um yeah continue <laughs> well that's the show no. All right. thanks for joining yep Interesting. Uh, 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 lead me to water. Lead me to water. Lead me to water. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you feel like people in your life who love you, whether it's comics or friends or family, like, what do you think they think of you? Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Um, I think, like, very extroverted and outgoing just because that's, you know, who I am. I'm never really one to, like, not talk to people or... Um, this is so so tough because the big thing I have is an issue with is like my self perception and mm. like my, my voice on stage, which I'm still finding, which is really cool. Um, but very very extroverted, very um, opinionated as well. Um, I don't know why I'm always have a strong opinion on stuff, but it's like even if it's trivial, I'm like I have a strong opinion on it. Um, I guess like, um, hmm. Yeah, opinionated is a good one, and also, yeah, pretty extroverted. Um, I don't say this isn't necessarily a negative one, but, like, persistent. Like, I'm always on my phone. I'm always able to talk to you, unless I'm on two nosy meerkats. Um, I'm always, like, present, and maybe that was, like, because I was, I was a producer or a production coordinator uh, for part of my job, so I always had to be present. Um, I got my Apple watch and everything's here, but like, I'm, I'm always present and always able to, you know, talk. Um, I guess like maybe like I, I care a lot, especially about people like I've just met. I'm like, I, I mean, I, I just as like from like a human to human type thing. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm looking out for people. Um, yeah. And I like, uh, just providing space for people and, and looking out for them in the comedy community, helping them networking. Um, yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how I grow into this career as well. So you're gonna have to have me on in about 10 years <laughs> and I'll be able to answer that a little better, but we'll do it. Yeah. We'll wait 10 years to the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, we'll, we'll stop episodes right now. All right. Let's put just... it in our, let's sync our watches. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. we'll download the MP3. Of course. Yes. So. And, and, and we'll be, Flash mobbing around the city in no time. Hey. <laughs> I'm everywhere. He's That's back. It never left. I think. I think personally, um, I definitely see you as somebody really driven. Like I think what you said is really interesting. It makes sense that you were a production coordinator. I feel like when I handed off the mic to you, you were like off to the races, and I was like, I am not worried about these people. Like they're gonna fucking crush it. And also, as I've gotten to know you over time, I mean, you're just so fun to be around. And I feel like you have a huge heart. And I mean, I just, I I hope that you also see yourself as just like very funny. Cause like, I feel like when I, something I remember was when we were all on mushrooms, you were there, but you were not on mushrooms. And, um, you were a great anchor. You were a a great anchor in reality. So helpful to have there as I like saw God. And then, um, yeah, you, you offered, um, 
the host to help clean up and the host was like I have a dishwasher and you went yeah and her name's Olivia <laughs> <laughs> she's such it a just good line ended me I was like oh this girl is just quick like quick witted yeah. I mean yeah fun. having funny people around me it's just and then I'm just like <laughs> I'm off I uh, I can riff for, for days I don't know it's, it's just, the best yeah. it's the best it's just like again bringing back to death and stuff <laughs> I, bring it to death bring Let, it back let's do um, it yeah. no it's like you never know how much time you get with a person you never know how much time you get I guess on this earth so I think um, I used comedy and and you know again I was watching a lot of old comedy shows like adult comedy shows as, as a young kid just comedy has always been like a weird coping coping mechanism for me and it's always something to bring me out of a space that necessarily so I've never always been this outgoing I was really really shy as a kid I was really really like introverted to the point where like I would hate going to school and I just didn't want to see people at all I think that has a lot to do with like you know losing you know losing my father my aunt and just people when I was younger and like kind of dealing with a lot of adult stuff as a young kid um and maybe also part of that is I've been in therapy for for ten years. <laughs> Go therapy! Wow. And, and and I think my therapist has a really good head on her shoulders to kind of bring me back down. And also, same one for all ten years. Ten, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Damn. We uh yeah she's she's my like she's my best, she's one of my best friends. <laughs> oh, I've also no. had the same therapist for like maybe eight years, yeah. and that's my bitch right there. Yeah, and she's also really she's really good at being like all of this is valid. Everything you feel is valid and reasonable, and I'm I'm like, how do I take those coping mechanisms that I've learned, you know, and I've been like you know privileged enough to learn because not everyone can go to therapy and like apply it to help my friends or the people I love, and mm. so that's what I'm always kind of trying to do is like you know make sure everyone is okay and make sure everyone is you know, doing well. Um, yeah. Especially the people I care about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the, all that I can add, because you nailed so much of like how I see you. I just see you as someone who's like very, uh, detail oriented, very competent, just very funny, very kind, very generous with your, like you, I, I don't, I don't want to say exactly what this was, but you helped me recently for an audition. You took time out of your day to like come I mean, over you to like, edited all these clips for me. Like <laughs> it's like just, yeah. Yeah. So generous. Yeah. I you, mean, it's, it's stuff I love doing. I love the casting process, even though it's absolute hell. Like I love, yeah. I don't, uh, as, as someone who's like been like on the other side of the casting table, it's like you don't want the other person to fail. You want the other person to, to do their best and see if they fit. Um, so when people are unprepared to go into auditions or don't get like kind of like a, or have a lack of like, um, you know, confidence when they go into auditions, I'm like, how, how are we changing that? How do we, how can I help you perceive yourself as like confident enough for this role? And I, I, yeah. I love doing that, especially for my friends who I believe in so much, like, I think you would be great for the piece you auditioned for. I, I Gabby's also just fantastic, and I can't wait to see you guys like grow and thrive, especially in we your career. We can't wait to see you grow. <laughs> oh, my oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! I just love my friends. I drink a hundred percent. I love my friends' juices morning. <laughs> <laughs> The room lights on fire as we're talking about this. <laughs> I'm just full of I love my friends' juice. Yeah. <laughs> it runs through my veins. No, but I um yeah, I just love and I love the process. I love. Editing, metic meticulously editing a 10 minutes a 10 second stand-up clip and i'll just do it for my friends because i want to see them succeed oh. i want to i want to help as much as i can and i want it's not that i expect it back but like sometimes you get it back it, com it yeah. comes back it comes i think back. what you put in does. you get out yeah olivia where can people find you on the socials on the socials you can find me anywhere at olivia senna um or else you can find uh, or uh, the comedy shows I host. Uh, I'll just do my comedy producing uh, account, which is lo at local darlings comedy on Instagram. Um, yeah, and uh, my house address is seven. <laughs> 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 Fan mail goes to <laughs> no, um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. Uh, or where I want to be found. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely show up to Olivia's house. What do I? My house what? address: uh, sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah. Ooh. No, that's my that's my war crimes address. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you say your war crimes there. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the capital address, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Oh, oh no, I think it's the White House. I think it's the White House. House. I'm yeah. so sorry, President. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Biden. Biden. Sorry, Dr. Sorry. Jill. But uh, we're forced to live in your America, so. Uh, <laughs> what do, what do I have for you yeah. guys? Let's see. Um, 
this week. Oh, I've gotten um, I've gotten really into uh, curries, like, like eating curry. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Have you made like a curry paste and stuff like that? I've made like um, like an okra curry with <sighs> like um. Uh, coconut milk and you know nice. all these nice spices and stuff like that. Now I it's want great. it. Yeah. Now I want it. And besides that, I'm doing a couple roast battles coming up. You can see me roast Claire Simikowski at Sour Candy um, at a Pete's Candy Store. There's a couple other shows I got going on, so just keep abreast of the situation. And Hell yeah! Uh, I am doing a Thunderground show. Nice. I think this will actually be coming out. Day of that. It's Thursday next week. Mm. So that's when that happens. Uh, I'm getting ready to do an hour for the first time, which I'm excited for at the end of the month. I'm going down to Delaware to do that. That's going to be fun. Uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, uh, sign up for my mailing list, which is on my website. Uh, you have me on the socials already at Lucas T. Arnold. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you, Olivia Senna, for being thank amazing. You, Olivia Senna. Thank you, Olivia Senna. Do you have any cats. final words for our listeners? Um, Piss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is what I'm about to do right after this podcast. <laughs> yes. No, I'm about to blow up the stand-up New York bathroom. <laughs> Let me comedian absolutely destroys bathrooms. <laughs> That's that's my takeaway. Wait, that reminds me of like a, a sort of like a dumb, a, such a dumb riff I thought of the other day where I was like, what if I went on stage and I was like, hey, this is what I'm working on. And then I just take a shit on stage. Yeah. Just take a yeah. five second long fart noise. Yeah. That's and then I go, and then I go, okay, what else? And then I take a shit on a different part of the stage. <laughs> you, and then you take a shit on the stool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta shit on the stool. Aziz does it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. And then I hump the stool. <laughs> <laughs> Is, has this been done before? Uh, Carlos did a thing on stage. Our friend Carlos Noya, amazing comedian, did something on stage recently that was like asking the stool for consent before oh. humping. Because stool humping is like a, like when you hump the stool in like a comedy act is like yeah. a thing. So he asked the stool for consent and was like, oh no, she's not. She doesn't want to have. <laughs> I was like, that man is a genius. Okay. So <laughs> me some Carlos Noya. As uh, always, thank you to Stand Up New York. Thank you, Stand uh, Up New York. We're going to blow up your bathroom. Thank you to our wonderful producer, Haley. Yes. Thank, thank you, Haley. Nosy Meerkats. And we'll see you never. Next time. Bye-bye.